everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this conversation one-on-one -on -one with Errol Toshjohn, who is a one of the candidates for the Board of Assessors here in town this year. Um, Errol, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank You're taking the time. Um, we, uh, you know, first thing I would like to talk, to ask you about is the fact that. Um, as you shared with us, um, both in your profile and in the debate, um, what has motivated you, what galvanized you to seek this seat uh, was your own experience not too long ago with moving into Arlington and, um, and being surprised about uh, your assessed rate and then looking, going through the process of, uh, of attaining a, a, an abatement. So, um, that didn't go well, and that spurred you um, to do this. Um, what else, you know, lest you be considered or looked at uh, as a single issue candidate here, um, mm -hmm. what else is it that you both want to do as part of right. the board and bring to the board aside from a fresh and not positive experience? Right, yeah. So. So two two things. So going back to kind of what what was the main catalyst for for getting me to be interested in, in running. So just to remind the viewers, um, you know, we, we you know we purchased our house in Arlington, which we were very excited about, and then soon thereafter, uh, we received our our pro first property tax uh, bill, and we noticed that the the assessment was about eight percent higher than the purchase price of our home, uh, which. You know, for the Arlington tax rate, 12, 12 or so dollars per 1,000, depending on, you know, the cost of one's house and, you know, house, housing prices are pretty expensive in Arlington. That can be, you know, a material amount for most people. Mm -hmm. So we did end up filing an abatement, which was a, a pretty arduous process. The form is, is lengthy, it's challenging. Um, and then ultimately we received an abatement from, from Arlington. And that, you know, I thought was, was, was pretty good. We, received an abatement for an amount, an assessment that was below our purchase price, which we thought was reasonable, although we didn't quite understand how the, the board uh, landed at that amount. And, and you know, I, I continue to see a theme here of, of lack of, of transparency, and that's really why I'm running. Um, you know, one of the reasons I'm running is to bring some additional transparency to uh, the voters and citizens and taxpayers in Arlington, really how these numbers are computed you know, what truly goes on behind the scenes with the assessor and the board. And, um, you know, it, it, the, the property tax is, is a significant portion of, of many folks' budget. So I think it's important that uh, each citizen is armed with the information and uh, that, you know, how, how did the board arrive or, or the assessor arrive at the values that they're, that they're uh, uh, being charged a tax rate against? Well, so if the main thing that you're concerned about is transparency, mm -hmm. that gives rise to two questions as far as I'm concerned. One is, what can you do? Mm -hmm. uh, what, assuming that you get in, what sure. can you do once you're in? How do you plan right. to make that happen? And my second question is, is it transparency um, uh, basically as it relates to people who are in the same position as you were in, people seeking an abatement or something else from the board, or is it a broader kind of transparency you're talking about mm -hmm. where the board is informing Arlington more generally or Arlington right. citizens or homeowners more generally about a number of different factors? So I think, I think the board and the assessor's office could publish additional FAQs going into exactly how the, the amounts are derived you know, I'm, I'm a CPA and I, I scrounged through as much documentation as I possibly could just to try to figure out myself and I couldn't figure it out. And I'm not the best CPA in the world, but if, if I can't figure it out, you know, it may be tougher for the, the average Arlingtonian to, to come to an understanding. Um, you know, additionally, I think additional um, transparency could, could be brought in terms of, you know, how the amounts are calculated and then the abatement process. You know, what, what happened at the, at the, uh, follow up at the, at the board a meeting where uh, they determined a, 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 an amount post abatement. You know, how did they arrive at that exact dollar amount? What went into that? So I, I think along with the decision uh, from the board, it would be helpful to understand what, what went into that, uh, that determination. Um, 
you just mentioned that, you know, would be helpful to know what's happening behind those closed doors in a sense, right? right? Um, have you been behind those closed doors? Have you attended? Um, I haven't, but I've, I've looked at the minutes and the last time I, I looked at the minutes, uh, there was a, a clear lag in, in publishing of those minutes from the board. Uh, and those minutes themselves were pretty sparse. Yeah, yeah I, th I think the minutes should disclose exactly how uh, the you know, the amounts were derived. If if that's not possible, then you know maybe a blanket statement like you know why why were the amounts abated or or you know what what drove the um, you know sales comparisons that led to the to the reduced or reduced amounts or whether there was no abatement uh, you know allowed by the board. You know, mm -hmm. what, what what went into that decision? Yeah, and I'd just like to return to a question that I had kind of thrown out earlier. Perhaps you 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 may have responded to it. I just want to to ask again: How do you see the functioning of the the, the assessors on the board? How do you see the way that that functions um, enabling you to make the the changes that you would like to see happen um, were you to be elected? Yeah, wh whether the board is empowered or not under Massachusetts general law, you know, I think a board member either, you know, representing the, the office in official capacity or as a private citizen could advocate for, you know, a bunch of changes, whether it's the use of, of databases, um, you know, sales data more effectively in the town, whether it's the uh, influence of, of outside consultants, you know, which consultants are selected, um, you know, we're, we're approaching um, you know, it's a, a, a time where uh, data mining is pretty sophisticated and uh, there's plenty of smart citizens in our, in our, in our town that, that have this expertise and I'm sure would yield uh, guidance in how to best, best and most effectively use the, the data that's available. And I, I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's something that hasn't been looked at by the, the board or the assessor's office to date. Um, why are you confident about that? Is it that you've approached the board to find out how they're doing this? You know, again, I know you said that right. that's the problem, right? Is that it's not right. immediately clear, but, but what kind of efforts have you already made to, to look into this already? Well, I, there's a ratio that's published by, by the town of uh, sales to assessment ratios uh, periodically. And some of these uh, ratios can can be uh, quite abnormal. So, so the guidance from the state is that an assessment to sales ratio has to be between 90 and 110 percent of the, the the fair market value. And from time to time, the the town publishes that there's uh, exceptions that deviate significantly from from the norm. And I, I I firmly believe if data was used effectively, there would be less of these deviations or uh, deviations that don't, don't exceed the norm by a significant amount. Um, one of the real uh, themes of your campaign so far is an idea that the board could use an infusion of uh, some younger perspective, let's say, sure. uh, as you, you have identif self-identified as a millennial and said, hey, you know, the board could use uh, this perspective. Right. What exactly do you mean by that, given that uh, one of the other candidates, a longtime incumbent of the board, has insisted that what they do has nothing to do um, with age and perspective that comes from age and serving a particular cohort or not, et cetera? Right. I, th I think in any job that that has been held by by 20 years, you know, I, th I think I brought up the, the point of auditor rotations before. Uh, I think anytime someone new is brought into a position that's been held by an extended period of time of someone else, that person's going to bring fresh ideas. Uh, they may uncover um, in new ways of, of doing things more efficiently. Um, you know, and, and frankly, I grew up in, a, in an age of technology that I think the folks on the board today, um, you know, they just grew up in a different time. And, and residents in Arlington um, are moving in from, from other, other towns. They're getting younger. Uh, so I, I think those folks need representation as, as well. And it's certainly, like I said before, the, the tax payments are a significant portion of their budget. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but what do you mean when you say that those folks need representation and and it has been stated that the board is not a representative right. body in the same way as a legislature represents 
protects the interests of its constituents. I mean, just personally speaking, if, if uh, you know, the determination of a, a large portion of my monthly budget is made by folks that aren't similar to me, don't represent me personally, uh, that's just something to, to consider. Um, you know, certainly it's on my mind, especially when um, it can affect your livelihood so much. And you um, mentioned as part of an answer a minute or two ago, technology and the fact that you know you have grown up and are comfortable let's say with a certain kind of integration of technology in your life mm -hmm. that you the assumption is maybe is not the case for many of the current board members do you see what what is one example of technology that you see could make help make affect the kind of changes that you're that you're wanting to see on the board and that you would bring to the table um, if you were a, a member. I can't name specific technologies. I'd have to see what data is available to the assessor's office and the board. And then I could, you know, look into the, the most effective use of technology to, to extrapolate and use that data effectively. Mm -hmm. Well, are you familiar, for instance, with the Patriot properties, the, the database? Uh, and, and do you know whether that's that's been you is currently being used is that something that you would would advocate for i'd have to see i mean i'm sure cost is a consideration some of these vendors um you know vary in in, in their pricing and i'm you know there's there's i'm sure limited resources that the town could deploy so it's a question of given the limited resources how can we accomplish the goals uh, make the process more transparent to, to the citizens in arlington uh, and, ju and just um, you know arrive at a better place. Okay, um, we have just two minutes left, and I wanted to make sure that um, you feel satisfied with what we've covered in the conversation, and to invite you to add in anything else at this point, if if you'd like. Yeah, thanks, James. Um, you know, for, first of all, I'd like to thank thank yourself and Sarah and ACMI again for for the platform and the opportunity. I just want to say that I think uh, you know as Arlingtonians, we're we're in this together doesn't have to be a uh, unilateral decision by the assessor's office or the board in determination of you know, how the assessments are done. I mean, you know, we're, we're a town of 40,000. There's plenty of intelligent people in town that have bright ideas how to make this a better process. And I think, I think we can do better. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I've Thanks, been James. speaking to Errol Tostjohn, who is a candidate for, assess for the Board of Assessors here in town this year. Thank you, audience, for joining us, and we'll see you next time.